right, guys. Welcome to Junior Church. Welcome to Junior Church. So glad you guys have decided to tune in again this week. Uh, it's going to be a great day here at Junior Church, and our emphasis is going to be on prayer. And so we're going to be talking about that all day today. Uh, and we're so glad you guys decided to tune in. So let's get started by singing one of my favorite songs. We're going to sing I Love You, Lord. And I want you guys to get up, stand up, and sing with your most beautiful voices. All right? Let's sing. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Man, good job, guys, singing that song. All right, let's sing that song one more time. All right, here we go. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear. May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. All right, guys. Great job singing that song, man. That is one of my favorite songs because, hey, whenever we sing for the Lord, we want it to be a sweet, sweet sound. Well, what if you said, Brother Chair, I'm not really a good singer. That's okay. The Lord made everybody different, and he wants all of us to sing and praise him. So if you sing with to him with the voice that God gave you, I promise you, you will make him very happy. It will be a sweet, joyful sound in his ears. All right? So now it's one of my favorite times uh, in junior church. We decided to bring back this magic trick time. Magic trick time. All right, so for today's magic trick, all you need is a fork. You can also use a spoon, but just a regular fork. So you see this fork right here? It's just a regular fork, metal, hard fork. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how you can bend this fork and bring it back like that. All right, so this is how it works. First, I'm going to do the trick. And then I'm going to show you how I did the trick. So the camera's going to move in just a sec just to get a closer look at the fork. But you guys watch along with me. All right, here it goes. So you guys grab the fork, all right, with two hands. And then you're going to push down as much as you can to bend it, all right? You're going to push down as hard as you can. It's going to look just like this, all right? Ah. Now, you see, so you got it bent, okay? Now, what you want to do is you just want to lift it back up. <sighs> All right? And there you go. You see? So we bent it and brought it back up just like that. So you say, Brother Chair, how did you do that? Well, I'm going to show you the trick. So it's all about where you put your hands, all right? So what you want to do is you want to grab the fork with your pinky, and you want to leave space where the fork can move. So when you close your hands, your thumb and everything is in front of the fork, okay? It's in front, not behind, in front, all right? Then you're going to put this hand on top like you're grabbing it. All right. Then when you push when you push the fork down, you're not really bending it, but what you're doing is this. I'm going to turn it around. You're going ah! You see that? So it goes down, but it looks like it's bent. And then to bring it back up, you breathe out. And there it is. Isn't that awesome? That is the bending 
fork spoon trick. You do this trick when you go out to eat with your friends and family, and you will be cool. All right, guys. Now, uh, right before we get into the message today, I'm going to sing one more song. Uh, this is a song that I used to sing when I was in junior church, you guys' age. And for, I don't know why, but for some reason, for a long time, I never got a chance to sing this song. Maybe because the other churches I went to, maybe they didn't know this song or they forgot about this song. But I was thinking about this song when I was making the message. And so God put this song on my heart. So I want to share it with you guys. It's called Whisper a Prayer. All right. You may have heard this song. If you heard it, great. You can sing along if you have it. That's okay. We'll sing this song two times and we'll all be able to sing this song together. All right. Here we go. It goes like this. Whisper a prayer in the morning. Whisper a prayer at noon. Whisper a prayer in the evening to keep your heart in tune. All right, let's sing that one more time, all right? Whisper a prayer in the morning. Whisper a prayer at noon. Whisper a prayer in the evening to keep your heart in tune. All right, man, great song. It's a great song. Man, I love singing songs like that that really just get my heart ready to go for the message. All right, now, before we go into the message, we're going to pray, uh, and then I'll introduce the message, and we're going to get right into God's Word. It's going to be a great day in God's Word. I can't wait to teach you guys about prayer. All right, so let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day, Lord. Thank you that uh, we get to be here uh, in your house online. Lord, I do pray that you would be uh, with all of us, Lord, that you would take care of us like you have been. Thank you for our health. Thank you for our strength. Lord, I do pray that um, you would forgive us for maybe uh, not paying attention during the videos or not doing our challenges or not spending more time in prayer with you or, or not spending enough time in our Bibles. Lord, whatever the case is, whatever the sin is, Lord, I do pray that you would forgive us. I pray that you'd help us to do better, help us to make decisions to uh, this week to uh, to go all in with our prayer. And Lord, I do pray that you would help me to be better uh, at praying. And Lord, I, I love you, Lord. I thank you so much for who you are. I thank you so much for what you've done. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So. Today, we're going to continue in our series of about being all in, all right? And I've already kind of alluded to what we're going to be talking about today. So today, we're going to be talking about how you can be all in with prayer, all in with prayer. Now, our key chapter in verse is going to be Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 11. We're going to start reading in verse number one. And I am going to read, okay? The Bible says this. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. All right? So what you see here, young people, is that the disciples are with the Lord and one of the things that they asked Jesus to do is to teach them to pray. They knew that there was power in prayer. They knew that prayer was something special. They knew that prayer was something that was important and they knew that prayer was something that they wanted to do because I guarantee you there were plenty of times when the disciples were out and they were serving the people or, or performing miracles or something like that, and Jesus would go apart and he would go pray and they would watch him. And they're saying, man, if he's praying, I wonder how he's doing that. So that that is going to be what we're going to be talking about today. So that's going to beg this question. How am I supposed to pray? How am I supposed to pray? Well, the short answer is, is there is no special way to pray. There's no special way. A prayer is just talking between you and the Lord. 
just like I'm talking to you right now, you can talk to the Lord. You can talk to God about anything and everything. A lot of times people will use prayer to ask God for something. Um, other times people will use prayer just to say hello, uh, just to say good night, just to say thank you. Prayer is communication with God. All right. So in order to be able to pray, how am I supposed to pray? Well, here's a quick answer that I'm about to show you. The best way for anybody to get started on how to pray is this. You have to have a plan. You have to have a plan. You see, it's been said for a long time, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So if you wanna go all in in your life with prayer, it's actually gonna take some planning. And that's really what the disciples were asking Jesus. They were saying, Jesus, what's your plan? What's your process? How do you prepare to pray? How do you do it? Could you teach us to pray? And so I'm not really going to be giving you any secrets to prayer. I'm going to share with you what Jesus shared with his disciples. And we're going to get all of it from the book of Luke chapter 11. And we're going to stay in this chapter. All right. So the first thing when it comes to being all in with prayer is this. You have to have a time to pray. You have to have a time to pray. Now, Jesus, he would pray during all times of the day. It's uh, a lot of preachers and teachers say that it's good to pray in the mornings uh, so that you can get your day started with the Lord. And I think that's a great idea. Uh, like the song said that we sang right before the message, whisper a prayer in the morning, whisper a prayer at noon. Whisper a prayer in the evening to keep your heart in tune. You want to have a time to pray. Well, look what Jesus said here in Luke chapter 11. In verse 2, he said this. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. So you see right there in the beginning, Jesus says, When ye pray pray well if he's saying when ye pray jesus is saying you better have a time when you pray so my question for you young people is this do you have a time when you pray do you like to pray in the mornings do you like to pray maybe on your ride to school do you like to pray when you're at lunch do you like to pray when you're alone? Do you like to pray for before you eat? Do you like to pray before you go to bed? When do you pray? The first thing that you want to have in your plan and you want to write it down is, I need a time to pray. I need a time. That's what Jesus was telling his disciples. You have to have a time to pray. All right? So once you know that you have a time to pray, then the next thing that Jesus teaches his disciples is this. And it'll be full screen. Know who you are praying to. Know who you're praying to. In the same verse, in Luke chapter 11, verse 2, the Bible says this. And he said unto them, when ye pray, that's the time. He says, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. So you see, young people, what Jesus is teaching his disciples is this. You better know and realize who you're talking to. You're not just talking to your friend, although prayer is like talking to your friend. But he's saying that when you pray, you better know who you're talking to. You're talking to your father, your heavenly father. You're talking to God, the God of the universe, the one that created the whole world. He created the stars in heaven. He created the seas and the fish and the birds in the air and the trees. He created everything that's inside of you. That's who you're praying to. 
We're praying to the God that sits on the throne in heaven. We're talking about the king of all kings. We're talking about a being that's been alive since before there was time. And then he says, hallowed be thy name. Special, important, lifted up is your name. He says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. You see, what Jesus is trying to teach his disciples, young people, he's saying, guys, when you pray, you better come correct. You better come to the Lord knowing that you are about to talk to the most powerful being ever. He is the one that's in charge. Man, isn't that amazing that the God of the universe, the one that's in charge of all of it, is willing, ready, and able, and he wants us to go to him, and he's willing to listen to us. You see, if you guys think about right now who your favorite singer is, or who your favorite athlete is, or who your favorite gamer is, or who your favorite anybody is, ask yourself this question. Could you just walk up to that person whenever you want, and talk to them. Think about that for a second. Could you go up to your favorite singer right now, whenever you want, and talk to them? Could you go up to your favorite gamer, your favorite athlete, your favorite ball player? Could you go up to them, your favorite YouTuber? Could you go up to them right now and just talk to them? Just to say hello. Could you do that? You can't do that with these people. But you can do it with the God that created your favorite athlete, that created your favorite YouTube star, that created your favorite music artist. You see, you have the power to talk to God of heaven. So when you pray, young people, you better have a time to pray and you better realize that you are talking to the king. And so back then, when someone would go up and talk to the king, you didn't just go up and just say whatever you want to the king. You couldn't just go up and start cursing at the king or getting angry at the king or, or getting mad at the king. You have to come with respect. You have to come with reverence. You have to come with fear. Because listen, at any time, God could take us away. And so when you're praying, you realize, man, I'm talking to God right now, and I want to make sure that if I'm talking to God, I want to give God the respect that God deserves. And that's what Jesus was trying to teach his disciples. Now, the next thing that you guys will want to learn when it comes to how to go all in with your prayer is this. Know who provides for you. Know who provides for you. In Luke 11, verse 3, it says this. Give us day by day our daily bread. You see, what God wants us to know when it comes to prayer, what Jesus was teaching his disciples, he was saying, guys, when you pray, not only do you need to make sure you have a time to pray, not only do you need to know who you're talking to, but you better remember that this is the God that takes care of you day by day. So if you're going to pray to God, you better understand he's the one that wakes you up every day. He's the one that gives you breath every day. He's the one that provides you food every day. He's the one that provides you a uh, shelter. He's the one that provides you family. He gives us day by day our daily bread and not just physical bread, not just physical food. He gives us the word of God. The Bible describes itself as the bread of life. You see, every day we get to wake up and we get an opportunity to get bread from the Lord. And so when you pray, you should be thanking God and you should be asking God, God, could you please take care of me today like you took care of me yesterday? God, you were so good to me yesterday. You gave me my daily bread yesterday. God, I am alive today because you took care of me yesterday. So you want to have that, that attitude of, of thankfulness. You want to be grateful that the God of heaven, the one that sits on the throne, was willing to take care of you 
every single day. So when you go asking God for something, remember, he's already taking care of you every single day. So you don't want to be selfish. You don't want to be uh, too crazy with what you're asking God. You don't want to have your prayers, God, please give me a million dollars and, and that be the only thing you pray for because that's not what God's interested in. You see, God cares about what's in your heart and God wants to make sure that you understand that if you're going to start praying and asking God and talking to God for stuff, you better understand that every single day he's already taking care of you and so you want to say god give us this day our daily bread because what you're saying is god could you please take care of me today like you took care of me yesterday and the great thing about god is that he loves to bless us and so some days he'll take care of you better than he did the day before how many guys have ever woken up and you were surprised by something? Something happened during the day and you weren't expecting it. Maybe your parents took you out to your favorite place to eat and you didn't know that was going to happen. Or maybe grandma came and she brought you a gift and you weren't expecting that. So you see, there are times when, when God takes care of us just a little bit more than he did the day before. And so when we pray, young people, you want to, and you're playing, you want to say, God, I know that you take care of me every day. And God, I'm just asking that you take care of me today like you took care of me yesterday. And be thankful for what God did for you yesterday. Even though it may not have been exactly what you wanted, even though it may not have been exactly what you thought it was going to be, it's exactly the way that God wanted it to happen. So we can just be happy and thankful that God did that for us. Now. The next thing you want to learn in your plan when it comes to prayer, you want to be able to do this. Know who can forgive you. In Luke 11:4, 4, the Bible says, And forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So what you see here is that when, you, when you're talking to God, you want to make sure that your heart is clean. You want to make sure that there's nothing that is stopping God from hearing your prayer. You see, the Bible teaches us that if we regard iniquity, sin in our heart, the Bible teaches us that God will not hear us. And so if there's something in your heart today that you are guilty of, that you know you did something wrong, Maybe you would have forgot about it, but you want to take some time and think and say, God, forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for what I did. Forgive me for what my wife did. Forgive her for her sins. Forgive me for all of my sins. Because listen, you want the Lord to hear you when you pray. So you want to say, God, I know I've messed up. I know I sinned in this area. Maybe yesterday I was being mean to my brother or sister, or maybe yesterday, God, I, I wasn't obeying mom and dad like I was supposed to, or or maybe yesterday, God, I, I didn't even spend time with you, and, and God, I'm sorry about that. And then, Lord, you want to ask God to help you to forgive other people for when they sin against you. Because, listen, it's very easy for us that when someone does something bad to us, when someone does something to us that we don't like, it's very easy for us to get really angry and not want to talk to these people and not want to have anything to do with these people. So when you pray and you're asking God to forgive you, you also want to ask God to help you to forgive other people. So just think right now, who are you mad at today? Who are you upset with? Who has done something to you that you are not happy with right now? And whatever that is, you want to ask the Lord to help you to forgive that person. Maybe you're you're watching today and you're saying, Brother Chair, I'm not mad at anybody. I'm good. That's awesome. But then he says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So what he's saying here is, listen, God... Forgive me for my sin. 
help me to forgive people that sin against me. And then Lord, help me to go today without sinning. Help me to not make any bad choices. Help me not to do anything that is wrong. Lord, help me not to sin. You have to understand that there's only one person in the entire world that can forgive you for your sin. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's God himself. He can forgive you for your sin. He can help you forgive someone else. And then he can help you to not sin. You know how God helps us to not sin every day? With this. When you read this and you see what God wants you to do with your life, every single day you get in God's word and you will see how God will teach you and mold you and train you to not sin. Uh, when I first got a, a Bible as a, as a young Christian, I, I remember um, the pastor, uh, Brother Coral, he wrote in the Bible, he said this, he said, uh, this book will keep you from sin or sin will keep you from this book. And man, that is so true. If you want to not have a day of sinning, you got to be in God's word. You got to be in God's word. So we want to make sure we have a time when we pray. We want to make sure we understand who it is that we're praying to. We want to make sure that we know um, who can forgive us. And then lastly, we want to do this. Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. You see, that's the hardest part. You see, when there's something that you're praying and talking to God about, what happens is, is maybe we may pray once or twice and we say, well, I asked God, we'll just see what he does. You see, I'll show you what the Bible says here. In Luke 11, 4, the Bible says, and I say unto you, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. You see, what God is saying here is it's more than just asking. You see, you can ask, but you want to take it to the next level. You want to start seeking and saying, God, I asked you about this yesterday. Are you going to answer my prayer today? I'm waiting for an answer, God. Could you please help me? Lord, I'm asking you to help me with what I'm praying about. So you asked the first time. Now you're seeking an answer. You're saying, God, I need that answer. And then you're saying, when you knock, you're saying, God... I need this now. You're trying to make it known. You're trying to get inside of God's ear. You're trying to get inside of God's heart. And God says, when you knock, it's going to be open. God's going to open his ears. He's going to open his heart. He's going to open his mind to you. And he's going to listen to you. And he is going to answer your prayer. I'll, I'll show you what the Bible says here. In Luke chapter 11, it says this right here in verse number five. It says, and he said unto them, which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, friend, lend me three loaves, talking about bread, for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me and I have nothing to set before him. So this one guy goes to his friend's house. He goes, hey, man, could you give me some bread? One of my friends was coming on a long journey, and I didn't know he was coming, and I need to feed him. So, But I don't have any bread, so can you help me? And from within shall answer and say, trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give you. So the guy that was already in bed, and this guy's knocking on his door asking for bread, probably in the middle of the night, he's saying, God, listen, go home. I'm, I'm, I'm already in bed. I'm not getting up. I'm not going to the kitchen. I'm not getting you, getting you any bread, so you might as well just go home. And verse 8, look what it says. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity... He will rise and give him as many as he needed. All right. And so what he's saying here is this. God is going to help you to get what you want. But God, sometimes he wants to see how serious you are about getting that prayer answered. And so importunity is saying, 
God, I need this. God, I need this. God, I need this. God, please help me. God, I want you to do this for me. Prayer after prayer after prayer after prayer. And you're making sure that God knows what you want. Question, young people. When was the last time you prayed so much that you may have gotten on God's nerves a little bit? How many times when you want something from mama and you say, mama, can I get a snack? And mom says, no. And two minutes later, mom, can I get a snack? And you say, mama says, no. And you say, mom, but I'm hungry. Mama says, no. You say, oh, mom, I need a snack. And mom says, fine, just go get a snack. And you're like, yes, I'm getting a snack. You see, that's how God is too. He's your father. And so if you go to God and say, God, I need this. God, I really, really need this. God, could you please help me with this? He will answer your prayer. Now, when it comes to an answer for your prayer, it could go one of three ways. It could either be, yes, I'll give you exactly what you asked me for. It could be, no, I'm not going to give you what you want. Or it could be number three, not now. You see, maybe God does want to give it to you, but he doesn't think you're ready yet to get it. And so God says, I'll do it for you, but just not yet. Maybe he's waiting for you to keep asking. Maybe he wants to see how serious you are about it. Maybe he wants to make sure that you're not doing it for a selfish reason. You see, God answers prayers when they are going according to his will. So you can't ask God for a lot of money if God never really wanted you to have a lot of money. Does that make sense? If God wanted you to have a lot of money, he would make it so that you would have a lot of money. Now, if you're feeling bad, if you're feeling sick, and it's God's will that you don't die, you could pray and say, God, could you help me feel better? And he may not help you feel better the first day, but if you keep praying, eventually you're going to get better. Why? Because God is not going to let you die because God's will is that you stay alive at that time. You see, you don't ever want to stop praying. I've heard lots of testimonies from friends of mine, other Christians, that they've had family members that are not saved. They don't know the Lord. And they would pray for them every single day for years and years. And then eventually that person ends up getting saved. You see, it wasn't because God doesn't want the person to get saved that he didn't save them right away because God says he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You see, maybe God stopped that person from getting saved right away because he really wanted to test you or that person and see how serious you were about that prayer and how serious you were about that person getting saved. So, that is the plan to pray. You want to make sure that you have a time to pray. You want to make sure that you know who you're praying to, God, the King. You want to make sure that um, you, you ask Him to take care of you every single day. You want to ask Him to forgive you for your sin. Ask him to help you to forgive other people that sin against you. Ask him to help you not to sin during the day. And then you want to ask him to answer your prayer. Then you can start asking God for what it is that you need. God, I need you to do this. God, I need you to do that. And then whatever it is, then God says, all right, if that's what you're asking me for, you can ask. You can seek. Let's see if you're going to do that and you can knock. So you want to make sure that when you pray, you have to have a plan. And in Luke chapter 11, the Lord gives us the plan. So that is prayer. If you follow this plan, I promise you, young people, you will be all in with your prayer. Now, if you ask Brother JR and Brother JR was going to be honest, Brother JR, do you follow this plan all the time? No. I mess up just like everyone else. But when I realize I'm messing up, I try to get back on the course, get back to the plan. And so this week, 
I want to show you guys with the challenge how you can create your own plan to pray. I'm not talking about creating a prayer list. I, I'm not talking about finding a prayer partner. I just want you to have a plan. So you want to create your plan and then you want to execute. You want to do the plan. All right. So before we go into the challenge, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Lord, thank you that um, you are so good to us. Lord, you are the God of heaven. You are the God that loves us. You're the God that created us. Lord, thank you for my salvation. Thank you for my health. Thank you for taking care of me yesterday. God, would you please take care of us today? Lord, I pray that you forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for where I've, I've upset you, for where I made you mad. Lord, there's people that have hurt me, and Lord, I, I don't want to be mad at them anymore. God, I pray that you'd help me to, to forgive these people. And then, Lord, I pray that you would give me something from the Word of God today so that I don't sin later today. God, I don't want to make you upset. I don't want to do something wrong that would cause you to be sad and, and angry with me. Lord, I want to make you happy. And then, God, I pray, Lord, that you would help our young people. If there's someone watching today that doesn't know you as their Savior, God, would they please contact us, leave a comment, leave a message, send me an email, Lord, that they, I could go and we could talk about it and someone could get saved because of this, Lord. I pray that you would do this, Lord. I thank you for Junior Church. Thank you for technology that we get to have these lessons. And, Lord, I pray that you'd help me. I pray that you help all of us to be all in with our prayer. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, here is your challenge for the week. The challenge is this. Spend some time this week before you pray to write down the below items and then pray. So create your plan. Write down when you want to pray. Pick a time. Write down why you are praying to God. Why? What is it that you're getting ready to start asking God? All right. Then you want to write down at least one sin that you want to ask God to forgive you for. Now, you can't tell me that you didn't go a whole day without sinning. Now, everybody sins at least once a day. So just take some time, really think about it and write that down. God, could you forgive me for this? And then write down how many times you plan on praying about whatever it is that you're praying for. If you have a sick family member, how many times are you going to pray until until God says yes, no, or not now? If, if you want a, a present for your birthday, a specific present, how many times are you going to pray about that before God gives you an answer? So you want to see, man, you want to make sure that God knows you are serious about it. You want to make sure that you have a plan to pray. And so hopefully this uh, this message today will teach you guys and help you guys to be able to have a plan to pray. That's what God wants. He wants us to all have a plan. Well, guys, that's it. I thank you so much for tuning into Junior Church. I love you guys very much. You guys have a great rest of your week, and I hope to see you in Junior Church very soon. Bye.